I'm Eric, and this is a PIO vlog. Aerial, medic, respond. We will be firing at heavy schools for the little trains in Broadway. Go ahead and uh, upgrade the car. Copy. We've got uh, four buildings involved in this time. Uh, collapse on three of them, and second alarm. Second alarm. We have the Q34, tower 45. Engine 42, engine 14, engine 44, engine 15, medic 04, medic 44, district 1, battalion chief 2, safety 18, med con off 14, second alarm structure fire. Hey everyone, welcome back to another vlog. I'm starting this one off at a big abandoned building in South Metro's district where our firefighters are conducting structure fire training. The scenario actually begins outside of this building and the first engine and medic unit are toned to a vehicle fire. When they arrive at the building, they're actually going to be encountering smoke from an upper floor. They need to reclassify the response as a commercial structure fire and then reference their building pre-plan to figure out how they're going to make access and what their plan's going to be when they get inside of here. You'll hear on the initial radio report that the engine company officer refers to this building as a mega commercial structure and at South Metro, we have four different sizes that we'll use to determine the size of a building. And it doesn't matter what kind of building or what type of occupancy it is. A small structure is anything that a 200 foot pre-connected hose line will reach 100% of the building. A medium-sized structure means that a 200-foot pre-connect will reach 75% of the building. A large structure means that a 200-foot pre-connect will reach 50% of the building. And a mega structure, like what I'm standing in right now, a 200-foot pre-connected line will only reach 25% or less of the entire building. So the hose stretches in structures like this are a lot more complex and it requires a lot more reconnaissance from the first due engine crew to figure out where that best line placement is. In real life, this is an abandoned building. So there's boarded up windows, there's chains on the doors and the intent of the property owners is to keep everybody out. But just because a building is considered to be abandoned doesn't mean it's not occupied. There could always be homeless people or kids inside playing. There could be workers of some kind in here and firefighters need to be ready for that situation to rescue those people. Throughout this abandoned building, you can see signs of the people who spend time here either during the day or even spending the night. As the drill starts to get going, you'll see South Metro personnel wearing a helmet and wearing a traffic vest, and those people are not in play. They're observing or evaluating the activity. All of the other personnel are gonna be in bunker gear, and some firefighters choose not to wear their Nomex hood because this is not an environment that's immediately dangerous to life or health. It's theatrical smoke, so to stay cool in this building and knowing that they need to be ready for calls after this training scenario is over, some of them are not wearing hoods to stay cool. That's not a PPE mishap, that is actually intentional. The area where the crews are training are filled with these orange LED lights to simulate what a fire looks like. Medic 41. Medic 41. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Just getting video of you starting this up. So you can see how quickly the environment in here starts filling up with smoke and the orange glow makes it look like a real fire. Lieutenant Zimmerman's turning on a Bluetooth speaker that will make the sound of crackling so it'll actually sound like a fire when crews get in here. 
So I'm out in the hallway right now on the second floor of this huge building where firefighters will make a stretch upstairs with their hose lines and just inside these doors are where that orange glow and the smoke is. So I'll take you inside so you can see the difference in the conditions and how quickly they change.
Still having a rise in CO though. Okay. So CO's, we have CO's 20. So we have them on 15. 15 liters. And then minute. I'll put six on the end title. Perfect. Thank you. So we'll get as much high flow in as we can. Um, sure. Alex, you're driving. What are you telling command when you're leaving the scene? Uh, medic 12 okay. transporting Three patient with okay. four fire riders to probably Swedish or Skyridge. Okay. We're emerging or not? Water emerging. Water All right. Cool. I re auscultated any changes. No. Okay. Two bags, 100 mLs, and then your kit. And then this one has the protocol in it. Um, I always love paramedic logic. If there's two of these in here, I should put them in here, right? But if you know the kit, it's a five gram kit. Inside, you've got your transfer spike. So the transfer spike gets plugged into your saline. Your saline goes this way. So here's your bottle. Um, got a fill line on it that's your 200 ml line so popping the cap putting the spike in spiking your saline and then it's a squeeze to get it in it's a little bit of pressure that you've got to apply pull this one off get your second saline squeeze it in agitate for a minute it's not a cocktail we're not shaking otherwise we end up with foam so it's that and with a sick firefighter that's gonna be a long slow painful minute of Hold on, I'm agitating. Dun, 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 like elevator music in the background. And then we're spiking it with that. So each scenario runs a little differently. This one concluded with a firefighter who had smoke inhalation and had to be treated and transported to the hospital right before a transition from an offensive to a defensive strategy, meaning the firefighters withdrew from the building and they would start fighting it from the outside. So as you can get a feel for it, there's a lot of different aspects to this incident and this training scenario to make it challenging. Focus. Three, two, one, seconds. 
There's three things I see in my environment. It's the last two things I did. What do I need to do now? These are self-regulatory processes to make you a thermostat, not at the moment. So I was just in the office working on this vlog when a large fuel spill was dispatched in Cherry Hills Village. So I'm going to take you guys with me. Incident aside. Your incident Zone A, Alpha, begin. Channel 1. A few moments later. They have called the their own house has and their plan was to take this current tank off and replace it with another empty tank. So before our firefighters arrived, there was a contractor that put a block of wood and piled dirt right there, which kind of saved the day and it prevented the diesel fuel from going downstream into a storm drain. So you can see where it all kind of ended up and collected. So the real intent of having a public information officer at hazmat calls like this is if we had to do some kind of messaging to the community, if there were going to be evacuations or shelters in place, um, or if there was a news media interest having a spokesperson here to talk about what's going on. This is an incident that was pretty well under control almost from the beginning, so there's not a lot of excitement. Generally, we don't see news media at incidents like this. And since no residents have to take action, there's only a local street closure here on, on the street where this occurred. Um, it's just kind of a, a low-key event. So. Uh, I'm here to just kind of document the scene, take some video, take photos of the operation that can be used for hazmat or investigation later uh, for training purposes. And that's pretty much it. All right, so I'm back in the office and here to give you some updates. First and foremost, thank you so much for reaching out and asking about Connor and how she's doing. Her and her family are doing amazing. She will still be on maternity leave for a while. So I am responsible for all of the video creation and updating our YouTube channel. And it's a lot of work for one person to do, especially when we're used to two people doing it. So I appreciate your patience. And we still have lots of great videos in the works. They're just taking a little bit more time than they used to before. So thanks for your patience on that. One of the questions that I keep getting is about merchandise, and I'm so excited I can finally give you an update. No, it is not a link to the store yet, but it is a sneak peek at a sample that I just got in the mail, which I think is super cool. It has our South Metro Fire Rescue PIO logo on the back. I'm working on a couple different design options, which should be done soon, and then we'll be able to share the store link with you. So check this out. Once all of the shirts are finalized, we will publish a link so that you can buy this merchandise. Unlike the first store that, that was only open for two weeks, this one will continue to be open constantly. They'll have more shipping options and then we will just update the different designs that we have at that link. Patch requests are also something that we continue to get and from a budget standpoint, uh, there's just too many requests for us to be able to mail patches to everyone who wants them. So I'm excited to announce that I'm also working with a new vendor on patches and it should just be a couple weeks until they get the order in and can start taking orders to ship patches to people who want to purchase them. And as always, if you have patches that you'd like to trade with us, we are happy to trade patches with you. We just can't distribute patches to everybody who's been asking for them. So as soon as the link to purchase patches is ready to go, I will share that with you as well. And again, hopefully that'll just be in a couple weeks. All right, here's some patch shout outs. Thank you so much to everybody who sent these in. This first one is from Lillington, North Carolina Fire. The next one is from Peoria, Illinois Police Department. This one is the Peoria, Illinois Police Department Special Response Team. 
This one is Volga, South Dakota Volunteer Fire Department. This one is Lenox Area Ambulance EMT. This one is South Dakota Emergency Medical Services. The last two are Syracuse Fire Department. The first one looks like the official fire department patch. And the second one from Syracuse is pretty cool with Marvin the Martian. This is the aircraft rescue and firefighting patch. So thank you so much for sending those in. Uh, for anyone who would like to trade patches with us, I will put our contact information, our address, in the description of this video and we are happy to trade with you and again as soon as those merchandise store links are ready i will share them with you asap so thank you for all of your support for all your great questions comments and feedback and i will see you on the next video